Well, welcome. I'm going to try to keep to our timeline here at 630. So um, Mrs. Guzik is uh, one of our seventh and eighth grade teachers. Uh, Ms. Crystal Paniagua is one of our seventh and eighth grade teachers. Um, I'll just do this quick presentation and then answer questions. And I, I believe the format is people are just going to come in and out of um, in and out of presentations of different schools. And so I am happy to um, answer questions along the way. So welcome. Um, my name is Kelsey Sims, and I am the very proud principal of Sunset K-8. This is my 22nd year as a principal in Ventura Unified. And I have um, had the pleasure of working at schools of all different grade levels, high school and middle school. So I have a lot of background um, in, in what, how the school of choice process works. So I'm happy to answer questions about that for any of our district sites. Um, we're very proud of a lot of the accomplishments that we've made as a gold ribbon school, a, a Title I Academic Achievement Award School and a green ribbon school. And those are accolades because of some of the special programs that we have here at Sunset K-8 and I'll touch upon those as I discussed tonight. Next Wednesday night, we will be holding a more in depth open house about Sunset K-8. We will focus a little bit more on our middle school program for our sixth, seventh and eighth graders but I'll be speaking about our entire program as the K-8 is special um, and we're an established program having been a, K a full K-8 program for 12 years now. And um, so we're excited to share all that that entails and the benefits for the younger students and the older students and what it enables us to do. So we'd be thrilled if you join us next week. Um, on our website, we actually have the Zoom link, so you're welcome to call the office. Um, we'll also be having a kindergarten and transitional kindergarten open house via Zoom. Um, in February, but we're very open and encouraging of families calling to set up an individual tour of our campus. I'd be happy to show you around. Um, we just need to do that in a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, one family and myself on campus outdoors for us to show you our campus and our classrooms and discuss your students' needs and, and tell you a little more about our school. So feel free to call and make an appointment. Um, I'm just gonna share this with you quickly because it gives you a little overview of our campus and what our campus looks like since you aren't able to be here with us tonight. So let me play this for you now. You hear the sound, everyone? We're located in Oakview, about 13 miles from downtown Ventura. A quick shot of the freeway of the 33. We have lots of families that come to us from all over Carpenteria, Santa Barbara, Ojai, because they like the program that we offer in the K-8 setting. If you're just joining us, welcome. I'm just showing a quick video. That's our natural habitat garden and our vegetable garden that we frequently use. We have a very large campus. It's very spread out. I'll let a few of the... Isabella, I've been at Sunset since, since kindergarten and I'm an eighth grader right now and I just love how I have so many friendships and like have so much fun at Sunset and I got to experience so many close clubs since we're a smaller been, school. And I've been here since kindergarten and one of the things I like about Sunset is how close the students are and the teachers so we can like help get help on like assignments that are due or something and we can talk to the teachers if we need help. And then also, I like the cross country team. It's. Hi, I'm Giuseppe. I've been at Sunset since fourth grade and I'm in eighth grade now. Um, some things I really like about Sunset is they have Battle of the Books and. So you get to see a little bit of our campus there. Um, what makes our campus unique, I really feel, is our school culture and our community. We have a very active and involved community. Our parents are very involved, K-8, um, and we have just a, a remarkable student connection where our eighth graders really take the younger students under their wings in, in addition to a lot of programs and things that we offer that I'll continue to speak to. Um, because we are a small neighborhood school with a K-8 program, uh, we do have that feel where we know every single student on our campus and can really build meaningful relationships 
and that allows us to academically meet the needs of all of our students. Um, it also, because of our small size in not only our middle school program, but in our whole K-8 program, provide things that other larger schools might not be able to do. For example, extra field trips, um, a lot of school-wide events, um, specialty classes. This is, what, this is when our students were doing a pound class for PE. So we've got a lot of things like that. Um, we have a fully operational science lab. We were very um, lucky to earn a grant a few years back and our science lab rivals what you would see at the high school campuses. So here's some students participating in that. There's a ton of research on K-8 programs and how um, they really allow students who are in their middle school years to continue to um, not worry about what's going on as much socially, uh, but really focus on their academics and have a little more individualized attention. And we've seen that. And we see that our eighth graders are very responsible and mature and um, service oriented. And they go off to high school and just do amazing, marvelous things. Um, our kindergarten through fifth grade program is really integrated to our whole K-8. But in kindergarten through fifth grade, we have an academic intervention hour every day where all students' needs are being met and no one is missing their, their general instruction. So students during that time are either getting acceleration or intervention, uh, but there's a lot to be said about having our older mentors on campus. The little kids love it, and our big kids really thrive by getting to be those mentors. Um, this is this in the picture in the upper left-hand corner. That's an event that our middle school students put on for our elementary students every year. It's called our leadership fair. And students earn tickets and then come and play games that our middle schoolers have put on. Um, you can see our cross country team here um, who are getting ready to leave for a, a meet, a cross country meet, and the entire rest of the school, the kindergarten through fifth graders, came out to cheer them on as they left the halls. Speaking about our middle school program, it's unique um, for us that our sixth grade class is contained and that's very intentional so that we can really focus on organization, that transition to middle school because the academic components are much different uh, as they turn into middle school, but it also allows them to be that middle school student where they have different um, electives, activities, a lot more leadership and responsibility. Our seventh and eighth graders um, core their subjects. So they have Mrs. Guzik for language arts and social studies and Mrs. Paniagua for math and science. And then they have PE in an elective and they switch electives every quarter. It really is a team approach to learning. So we're able to meet the needs of all students, pushing those students that are advanced in certain areas to do their best. But it also allows us a lot of collaboration to meet the needs of all of our kids. Uh, we do have a large technology focus on our campus, even pre-COVID. Um, we are a one-to-one -one campus. So our students have access to a Chromebook and we're very proud of that. But in addition to that, it's how they utilize that technology that they're it's um, they're using it to lead, they're using it to learn as opposed to just being on the technology. Um, some other things that make us unique are that flexibility and creativity. When we have a group of um, about 100 middle school students all together, six, seven, and eight, we are able to really tailor things. So that group might have a really special interest and then we take them on a specific field trip. Uh, we're able to do a lot of things like that that are just not possible at the traditional middle school because of the size and because of our smaller size, we're able to do lots of field trips. Um, we can change elective courses with that flexibility. So that's a really nice thing. Um, we have been a very consistently strong academic school. Um, I, I, this sounds like a long time ago, 2012, but that was the last California standards testing. And we were the fifth highest ranked school in the county in terms of growth, which was a really big accomplishment. And we won some awards for that academic achievement. And since then we've consistently um, showed those kind of scores, earning the Title I Academic Achievement Award School for the CASP assessment. So because of our size and our academic rigor and the intervention programs that we provide, our students we know are getting a really solid academic education. Um, here's some more examples of our science lab and work, a lot of group projects, a lot of exploration, student-centered learning. Here's the Socratic lecture circle where students are debating each other. Um, more pictures of the science lab. This is our hydroponics lab that we pull out usually about once a year, kind of depends when we use that. Another thing that I'd like to mention is our attendance at Sunset. We're one of the highest in the district and we're the highest for all the middle schools in the district, which is actually hard to do because of our size. We are so much smaller that those percentages could be out of whack really easily. 
So that just shows to me that our students are engaged and happy and they want to be here. Um, and we do a lot of fun things that kids don't want to miss out. These are some of our elementary students on Twin Day. Um, kind of cute. A lot of opportunities on our campus, student council, yearbook, battle of the books, those are middle school themed um, opportunities, but we have community service and mentoring for all of our students, our, our fifth and fourth graders are big buddies. Um, we have a boys and girls club after school program that is free and open to all of our students grades first through eighth, the kindergartners are too little, um, but they get there in first grade and so there's an after school program, our cross country team for both elementary and middle school. And we have a garden club and a green team um, and that's for our K through fifth grade students, but our middle schoolers are often out in the garden as well. So just a few other pictures um, showing some of the life, a day in the life of a sunset student. Our cross country team was very proud. Here is our student council team. Um, many years they go to a, a um, leadership conference where there's middle school students from all over Southern California and they've won the Spirit Award two or three years, um, which is pretty awesome based on how small we are. They are mighty, small but mighty. Um, here's just some more pictures of student um, events and evenings that we do here at school. In our middle school program, we take three field trips in a normal year um, to at least um, a Cal State campus, a UC campus, a community college campus, and oftentimes other college campuses as well. So that's something unique to us in their middle school years. Every one of our students will get to visit a campus. Um, here's some examples of our middle schoolers teaching the kindergartners and our elementary students how the playground works and how to play all the different games and have a good time. We do spend a lot of time in the garden, as I mentioned, um, not only um, in our fruit and vegetable garden, but in the natural habitat garden. Um, so that's a real strong source of pride for us. And then, as I mentioned, we have a large, beautiful campus um, just located right up the 33, uh, not too far from Midtown Ventura. So how to apply to our school? It was mentioned in the main session. We are a school of choice. And so parents can apply to Sunset Middle School through the 15th through the 29th online through the School of Choice. We're happy to help you with that application if you call our office. Um, and that application for us is good for the entire K-8 grade span. Um, we also take students after the School of Choice window opens if we still have space on intra-district. And we do accept a lot of inter-district permits from outside of our district. As I mentioned, we have students from Carpinteria and Santa Barbara sometimes because of our unique program, definitely from the Ojai community um, and outside of the Ventura area. So, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about how we can assist you with application. And that is our cute little sunset sign with some of our eighth graders showing their love. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and kind of open it to the floor if anyone has any questions. Um, again, we will be having an open house that is specific to sunset next week. We'll go a little more in depth um, into our school, K-8, and how it works. Um, and that will be next Wednesday night at 6 p.m. There will also be in February, a kindergarten open house night via Zoom. And you're welcome to set up appointments um, to come and tour our school. Just call our office and our office manager, Wendy Clyde, will be happy to make an appointment for you to come in. So with that, um, it was supposed to be 15 minutes and that was 14. Um, so if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to throw them out to me. Um, there will be another um, go around of all the schools at seven o'clock. Um, so if you want to go to other schools at that time, they'll be doing presentations again, kind of on uh, repeat. So does anybody on the call have any questions for myself or for one of our teachers? I have a quick question. Um, you mentioned uh, your middle school orientation will be January 20th at six. And then when did you say your kindergarten orientation would be? Kindergarten. February 25th, and I believe that's at six o'clock too. The flyers on our website, um, and okay. we'll be doing a Zoom for kindergarten, uh, like we normally do our big open house where the kindergartners come and see the room, and the parents get to come and sit in the tiny little chairs. Um, I doubt that by February we'll be able to have that kind of an in-person event, but again, I'm happy to do individual tours. But we will be doing a Zoom night specific to kindergarten. Um, how long has the Sunset School been a TK? Uh, T 
through kindergarten through eighth grade. Yeah, so so Sunset used to be just an elementary school. We've been a full K-8, TK-8 uh, for 12 years. So we're a pretty established program um, and we've had so much success, not only academically and social emotionally with our students. And we generally have a wait list for our middle school program. Um, that is why the district was looking to kind of model other K-8 programs in the district after what we're doing. Um, obviously, geographically, you know, we're kind of in a little bit of a different location. So it's not necessarily, um, you know, for people on the far east end of town, having another option for a K-8 is amazing. And Lemon Grove will be uh, doing that next year for the first year. So I'm sure their program will start very small and, and you know, get larger as they go along. But yeah, we've been a, a K-8 for 12 years, Sue Lynn. Ms. Sims, um, Sarah has a question. It looks like she's raised her hand. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. Um, my question is, um, you know how this year and the past half year, um, they've been doing a lot of online, but we understand, or I have the feeling that they're not learning what they're supposed to be learning in a regular year. So um, is that something you guys are considering? Like, is, is it going to work the same or they're just going to, I'm not going to say ignore because that's not the word, but like just not worry too much about things that are not that important for the kids in the grade level they're going to? That's a great question. Um, obviously, we can't wait to get everybody back on campus full time. And we're really hopeful that that will be the case in August when school reopens and potentially even sooner. Um, and to, to answer your question, you know, for if there has been learning loss because students who have struggled on the Zoom, we definitely are going to be very intentional about filling those gaps for students um, and working individually. We already have a plan to have extra staff on campus next year that will be able to assist with intervention for all of our students if there are students who are behind. Um, but you know, we, we're just really hopeful that it will look like a full blown regular school year come August. So we can all hope on that. That is the plan. So I'm not sure if that answered your whole question, Sarah, but we, we will be doing intervention for students that maybe um, you know, missed some things this year. We'll be doing assessments to see where the holes are and then filling those gaps as we get them back on campus. And we're doing that now actually as well, even online. Um, we have four or five different ways to get intervention. We're starting small groups next week here at Sunset for some grades and some targeted groups. And we have online intervention as well. Oh, okay. In the after school program, uh, <clears throat> do you know what happens in that during that school? I mean, after school time, uh, do we ask you guys or we have yeah. to talk? No, to it's a great, it's a great question. We work really, really closely with our after school program. Um, our students take the bus from our school to the Oakview Community Resource Center, which is only about a mile and a half away. Um, but the bus takes the students down there. When they arrive at the site, the teens go to the teen center. So our middle school students go to the teen center. The first through fifth graders go into their um, pods at the after school program. They get a snack. Usually when they first arrive, they do some outdoor games and um, sports and recreation. And then they'll go in for homework and tutoring time. And the Boys and Girls Club staff assist them with their homework. Um, they have availability of our accelerated reader program and our Moby Max math program at the after school program. And then um, parents pick up any time between four and six. Uh, and students that have activities after school, say they play a sport or they, they have a piano lesson or a doctor's appointment, they can be released early from the Boys and Girls Club um, at those times if that applies. So. You can apply with us or you can apply with them directly. We always assist people with getting into the after school program. Um, a large majority of our students go to the after school program every day. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. There's any other questions? Happy to take them. I have another question. Um, so let's say there's a kid that's incoming, not have it hasn't been part of an elementary um, class and it's going to be coming into your middle school program. How do you guys uh, 
kind of work with the kid and acclimating them and making sure that they're, you know, going to be successful in building relationships when there's been already those other kids perhaps that have been there for a long time? That's a great question. I'll just take the first part and then I'll ask Mrs. Guzik or Mrs. Paniagua, they can follow up with it as well. Um, Sue Lynn, we get a lot of students that come to us just for middle school. So they might have been in an Ohio elementary or an elementary school in, in one of our Ventura Unified campuses. And they transferred us for middle school because they want the smaller setting. So one, I will tell you, that's not unique. We, we get kiddos all the time from different schools and they do merge right in. And it's because of a very, some very intentional things that our middle school teachers put on for them. So Ms. Guzik or Ms. Paniago, you want to share maybe a few of the things that we do to make sure that our whole middle school has gelled and there's no, um, there's nobody on the outs with their new to our campus. Well, something that I love and, and I notice as soon as the students know there's a new student, they're intrigued. They're like, oh, who's a new student? Can we show them around? Can we, so they right away, like without us having to be like, can you make sure they know where everything is? They want to know who the new student is. They want to talk to them. And Ms. Guzik can add to this. It's by the, I guess, even by the end of the week, sometimes I feel like they've been there since kindergarten, just because of how they interact with their students. Um, and I think also having those small clubs like leadership out of the books uh, and even the like community service-based clubs, they wanna be part of that and becoming part of that smaller group within the small group really does help them. Um, really, I, I would agree with everything that's been said. The only other thing that I've done that's um, really specific and intentional is often if there is a new student to our school, um, I will take a few leadership students aside and kind of ask them to introduce themselves and for lack of a better term, kind of adopt that new student at first to make sure that that student is never left thinking, wait, where, where are the lunchrooms or what, what am I supposed to do now? Or who am I gonna sit with? Um, I never want anybody scared or nervous about those kinds of logistics. So I often have my leadership students reach out and, and really introduce that student to other children and then I think that gets reinforced with all the clubs that we do have. So if they join Battle of the Books and they join Leadership or they join We Club or they join um, Cross Country, they can make friends pretty, pretty fast and pretty easily. Our you know, average grade size is around 30. So they get really excited when there's a new, a new friend on campus. I would They'll get a lot of attention. Yeah, they get a lot of attention. But that would be kind of the middle of the year transfer at the beginning of the year kind of everyone's new, even if they've been here since kindergarten. And we do um, a program called Color Challenge where sixth, seventh and eighth graders are mixed together on teams. And we do a whole, the whole first week of school, they're all working together. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of little things we do like that to make sure that there's inclusion. And um, we have a very eclectic campus, uh, just a student body and everyone's very accepting and um, it's just, it's, it's a great group of kids. Uh, Ms. Guzik mentioned we have approximately 30 students per class. That's where the 90, 90 to 100 middle schoolers on our campus comes in. Uh, our campus is generally about 375 students. Um, so about 275 elementary students and 100 middle school students. So it's a really good balance. And per grade level, how many grade, like let's say you have one sixth grade or is it like two sixth grade levels? Uh, yeah. Two classes? Um, so, in our elementary program, we have two kinder, two first, two second, two third, um, two fourth, and two fifth. And then when we get to middle school, we have a sixth grade class, a seventh grade class, and an eighth grade class. Our sixth grade class is contained, meaning that um, all of our students, six, seven, and eight, have PE. All of our students, six, seven, and eight, have an elective period. And then our sixth graders have language arts, social studies, math, and science with the same teacher. And that's really by design because it helps them to ramp up those middle school academics in a, um, a setting where they know what to expect from the teacher and there's a lot of support. And in the seventh and eighth grade classes rotate. So they might have Mrs. Guzik in the morning for language arts and social studies. And then they would go to the seventh graders would go to Mrs. Paniagua for math and science and vice versa. The, when the eighth graders are with Mrs. Guzik, the the seventh graders are with Miss Paniagua. And so um, they have their, those two teachers for language arts and social studies and then math and science. And then they might have any of the three teachers for PE instruction and any of the three teachers for elective instruction. Um, one, one more question, I promise. I'm sorry for all the no, questions. No, you're good. I'm glad you're asking. Um, what, uh, with a, a child that has special education, 
uh, what kind of support do you guys have in your school? Great question. Um, so we have an SAI teacher here on campus. That's our specialized academic instruction. Um, she is doing um, pull out and push in services. Um, we have our occupational therapist. We have our um, speech therapist on campus. So students are getting those services throughout the week. It does look a little different for middle school students um, because we wanna make sure that they have access to everything that they might need. So that would be a, um, a conversation that would come up in the transition IEP in fifth grade if Sunset was a good fit, because we don't offer every level of math at the comprehensive high school, for example, middle school, for example, there's three or four different classes of math. Um, and so if a student really needed a specific class that we aren't able to offer, we may or may not be the best fit, but uh, definitely open to exploring that. Um, we do not have special programs like the special day class or the deaf and hard of hearing program on our campus. Those are all programs that are at, at specific school sites in the district. Um, and if that didn't answer your question, I'm happy to talk with you more specifically about, you know, what the IEP entails and if that's, you know, um, how we would meet those needs here at Sunset K-8, depending on the grade level. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, Lenny, you look really familiar. I feel like I've met you before. I don't know. Just saying. Um, let's see. I used to run uh, Ventura County Star Spelling Bee quite some time ago. I used to oh, work okay. at Ventura County Office of Education. Oh, I used to get emails from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else on the call have any questions? Um, I, I think I got in, in the Zoom a little bit late. Um, did you guys talk about the clubs that they have in middle school? And, um, well, I'll think about it because I forgot what the, the second question was. Yeah, um, I can fill you in on that. There's a lot of different clubs and, and sometimes we add things on based on what students' needs are. Uh, we have student council, we have a battle of the books team, we have um, a WE club, which is a service oriented club that provides community service in the community. Um, we have, what else am I missing guys? There's so many things we have going on. We, there is nothing that happens at the comprehensive middle school that we don't pull off here with just a smaller team of people making it happen. We have middle school dances. We have middle school movie night. Um, we've got a lot going on for our students. And a lot of those things our elementary students can participate in too, some of those things I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Also, um, cross country and robotics were two more that I thought of. Thank you. All right, well, we're just about getting into the new group. Um, again, I would welcome those of you that stayed for this first part. If you, um, I'm gonna do a little more in depth presentation next Wednesday night during our sunset open house. Um, so I would invite you to come back for that. And we're going to have our kindergarten open house in February. And again, those flyers are on our website. And additionally, I'm happy to do um, tours of our school if you just call for an appointment. Um, so I'm going to transition back to the PowerPoint again for those of you that are newly joining us. Welcome. Um, I'm going to get started in just a minute. We're going to let people pop out of our Zoom that we're here for the first presentation and give it just two minutes for new, new people to pop back in. Um, so if you're on the call and you have any specific questions, feel free to ask them now. And right at seven o'clock, 701, I will start a quick presentation of um, what is Sunset K-8 and all the great things we have going on and then answer question and answer period after the second presentation. <laughs> 